Hi, I'm Sean Calloway and I'm the Product Development Manager here at Anzo USA. And today we're going to be installing our new full LED headlights on a new body Dodge Ram. They're available in chrome and black as you can see here. So let's take a closer look at these and see what's going on in them. Okay, so once we get everything out of the box, you'll see, you'll have your headlight. And then it comes with the new bottom bracket, which mounts down here along the bottom. It's going to come with a pair of harnesses. So this is for the DRLs and they've already got fuses on them um, to plug into the fusible uh, link in the fuse box. And then we also provide some hardware. So the small screws, small silver screws will be to bolt this bracket onto the bottom of this. And then we also have a new body clip and some other mounting hardware for you. And we'll go over all that once we install it on the vehicle. So looking at the light a little bit closer, what we have here is we have three LED projectors for the low and high beam. We have our white crossbar, which is for running light. And then we have our sequential turn signal down here on the bottom, and that'll be amber. Over here on the side, we have the reflector. And then on the back side, we've got all our connections. So this is for the DRL, the white one with the single connector. This is the main plug-in, as well as beam adjusters, mounting tabs, and vents right down over here and then the side marker light as well. Tools needed for this, flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, 3 8 ratchet, a short 3 8 extension, a 10 millimeter, and an 8 millimeter socket. Okay, so we're ready to take apart the front of the vehicle in order to get the headlights out and get the new ones in. So for that, we're gonna need to remove this top cover, the grill, and these side corner pieces in order to get the headlight out and put the new ones in. So to remove this top co cover, there is 12 push tabs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a flat blade screwdriver just to insert in and pop these up, just like that, to pull these out. Again, there's 12 of them. Okay, so now that we've got the top cover removed, the next piece that we're gonna have to remove will be this corner piece, and then we can get to the grill. So in order to remove this, you have to remove four eight millimeter bolts from the fender lip right here. So you can pull the wheel well liner back and get in there to this 10 millimeter bolt that's hidden right here at the top in order to release this. The rest of it is just held in with clips. Okay, so we've got all the bolts out of here on the side along with this 10 millimeter that's right here. Now all we have to do is take your hand and you just wanna, you might have to use a little bit of force to get these top tabs here to release, but it'll release like this and then you'll be able to slide them all off just like that. Okay, so now we can remove the grill from the vehicle. So there's 14 bolts in total. There's gonna to be eight along the top and then three on either side right here. Okay, so we've got all the bolts out of the grill and to remove it uh, on these outer tabs, you just wanna pull up so it slides forward and then you want to support your grill so you don't mess it up or anything and just kind of jiggle it out and it comes right out. Okay, so now that the grill's out, we can remove the headlight. We have two bolts and a push tab left. So there's one 10 millimeter bolt right here and then there's one right here on the side, it's silver. And then the push tab, you'll need your flathead screwdriver and it's located here at the top to hold this top bracket into the fender. Okay, so we've got all the bolts out. Now all we have to do is just slide the headlight out and disconnect it from the harness. So you only get it about this far and then you have a connector here and a connector out here that you have to unplug. Okay, so before we can install our lights, we do have to attach this bottom brace to the light and we do provide all of the hardware for that. So what you'll need out of the baggie is gonna be one of these retainer clips. This will just slide in right here on this bottom hole in the front, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we will line this up and it'll drop right in once you have it lined up. Just like that. And then we'll take our black 10 millimeter bolts and one goes in right here to hold this part on. The other one 
is going to go in right here in this top hole. And these are both Phillips, so we'll just use the Phillips screwdriver. Or you can use a 10 millimeter socket if you'd like. So there's that. I'll do the same thing for this one right here. And the last thing is we'll take three of these silver small Phillips screws. And these are gonna go in right in here. Get those started with our fingers. use our Phillips to secure these down. You don't have to go super tight on them, just until you feel resistance and you're good. Okay, so this light is ready to go. All we have to do is install our daytime running light harness on the vehicle and then we can install the light. Okay, so one last thing we have to do before we install the headlights on the vehicle is get the harnesses set up. Now we do provide this harness, and this is for the daytime running lights. So we have two harnesses, one with two fuses in it, and a push-in link, as well as a bullet end. And then we have the other harness, which we'll set up first, is has a single end and a double end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this across the core support right up here. We're gonna drop the single end in down over here by the passenger headlight. We'll route this along the top of the core support and then this will get secured down if you have zip ties. Um, you'll wanna uh, just secure those down. You can secure them down to this cable here. And then your double end is gonna get dropped down right in here. We'll just pull this through right here. Now for this part, this is for the fuse part. So this one, one end is gonna plug into one of these, it doesn't matter which one. So we'll choose um, the red one. This, it's got a red and a green wire, but they're both together here. So it just pushes right in, locks up, and then we'll route this part of the harness back up through here and get it connected inside the fuse box. Now, the, the pin that we're gonna wanna go into is F59. Okay, so let's take a closer look at that and we'll get that installed. Okay, so in the fuse box, you're gonna wanna locate F59, which is located right here. You correlate this over to your fuse panel, which if you lay this like this, it's just like your fuse box. So that is right there, the 25 amp fuse. So we're gonna take the fuse grabber, which is located here, to pull this out. We'll set that off to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our provided harness, which has a 25 amp and a 15 amp, so we're replacing that 25 amp. We're just going to replace that right back in here, just like that. And then we'll wrap the wiring down like this, and then we can go ahead and Put that back on and we're good to now we can install the headlight okay so now that we've got the bottom bracket on the headlight and the harness ran we can go ahead and install the headlights this is very easy we'll just have to connect these connectors and slide it into the pocket Okay, so all the connections are made. Now we can just go ahead and line this up. Just like that. Get these lined up here. What I like to do is take and line this top where the push pin was and just set the bottom part of the push pin in to hold the light so we can get the rest of the bolts in. Okay, so we've got the whole front end back together. Everything's plugged in and ready to go. The last thing that we're gonna need to do is adjust the headlights. So for that, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver. 
And the adjuster is right back here. It's a, it looks like a little uh, bottle cap. And um, the teeth on it, the Phillips screwdriver will fit right into it. So you'll spin that left or right in order to move these up or down, depending on what you need. Um, the rule of thumb is 25 feet away from a wall. And then you bring the beams up to two and a half to three feet, depending on what you really want or how high you really need them. And then um, the best way is to mark your stock ones and adjust them according to that. That way you don't need a lot of room in order to adjust them. But let's go ahead and uh, check out all the functions and see how they look.